Welcome back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. In the previous programming class, uh, we talked about uh, spectral peaks and how to program them, how to detect the values of the spectral peaks. And that was the beginning of implementing the analysis synthesis using a sinusoidal model. So we identify the values of spectral peaks, which hopefully correspond to sinusoids. So in this uh, second class, uh, I want to introduce the idea of how to synthesize uh, a sinusoid from those peaks, so how to do basically additive synthesis. So we will be doing it in the frequency domain, like we talked in the, in the theory lecture, in which we are basically synthesizing the main lobes of uh, a blackman harris window, and then do the inverse DFT of that. So this equation shows uh, the idea that uh, we synthesize the sound y by taking the inverse dft of a sum of main lobes and in here uh, we see the plot of that so we see uh, the the main lobes already being generated the faces already being generated and then we take the inverse of that to generate the synthesized sound so let's uh, show that and we first have to actually uh, learn how to synthesize a lobe of uh, a blackman harris window. So in this uh, little code, uh, I show that. So we call this function called genbh lobe, and we give it the, the samples, the bins, that we want to generate. So since we only want to generate the main lobe, we just give the eight uh, centered uh, bins of that. But first, let's look at this function, gmbh lobe, which comes from the util functions um, file. And in here we have this uh, gmbh lobe, which uh, implements the, the, the generation of a blackman harris window directly in the spectral domain. In the spectral domain, a blackman harris window is the sum of four sync functions. And this is what this uh, main uh, loop does. It uh, generates uh, four uh, sync functions and it sums them together. Each sync function has a coefficient that comes from the equation of the blackman harris window. And then uh, in, uh, in this of this uh, sync function, we call a function called sync, which also is here, which is uh, what generates one particular sync function. Again, it only generates the main lobe. It doesn't generate uh, the whole sync function. Okay, so with these two functions, we are able to generate the main lobe of a, a blackman harris window. Let's uh, run this code. Okay, run test 2. Okay, and if we uh, show the output X, capital X, these are the eight samples of uh, the blackman harris window in a linear scale. Okay, so the center is this, uh, the, this uh, fifth sample which is value 1. If we uh, take uh, the absolute, uh, well, the, the log of that, so 20 uh, times log 10 uh, of this x, we will uh, see it uh, in a log scale, okay? And uh, we can plot it. So we can plot this, okay? Up. And we have one, oh, okay. So this is the main lobe in the log scale of uh, blackman harris window. If instead of reading uh, the, the, these uh, samples, we read some other series of samples, for example, we just add 0.5 to this array, and we save it, and now we run it again, and we plot it, well, we have to plot, okay, plot uh, this, okay, now we see that uh, these are different samples, these are the, there is no center samples, so there is basically in between two samples. This is how we generate main lobes corresponding to different frequencies, because we are moving this uh, main lobe around uh, these samples. Let's uh, now uh, do it with uh, with the function that uh, the SMS tools uh, does it, which is the function called genspec signs. So genspec signs has as input 
arrays of frequency, magnitude, and phases, and then it generates a spectrum uh, that uh, includes all that. Okay, so in this code, I am generating uh, one single sine wave at 4000 uh, hertz, magnitude of zero decibels and phase uh, zero, and I'm generating the whole FFT of size 512 samples, and then I compute the absolute value, uh, and then here I plot uh, the log uh, of that, so the dv value of that. So let's show that. Let's uh, run test three. Okay, and this is one main lobe of a sinusoid at frequency 4000 hertz. And if we zoom into that, we will see, uh, yeah, this is the main lobe. And of course, this has been shifted exactly to have a center around 4000 hertz. So if we go uh, zooming in more, we will see that the tip of this uh, uh, peak is uh, basically uh, at 4000 hertz. Okay, um, now uh, let's uh, uh, talk about how to actually generate the time domain from that, so we have to do the inverse Fourier transform from that, and, and this is in, the, in this other script, I implement that. So after uh, having done the gen spec signs, I call the inverse FFT, and then there is some code to undo the windowing of the blackman harris window. We mentioned in the theory class that in order to have a good overlap add with a not much uh, small hop size, it's good to undo the blackman harris window and apply a, a triangular function. And this is what we do in this part of the code. We generate a synthesis window, which is SW, which is the result of having a triangular window divided by a blackman harris window. Okay, and this is what we multiply by to the, the inverse of the DFT of the of what we uh, obtain. So let's uh, let's run this code. So let's run uh, test four. Okay, and uh, we can plot uh, the individual steps. So let's plot first the absolute value of the spectrum. Okay, so this is the complex spectrum of the sinusoid. Well, only the the, the magnitude part of that, so that we see both the negative and the positive side of that sinusoid. So we see the in here the x-axis is not in, in hertz, so uh, we don't see the exact values, but this would correspond to the 4000 uh, frequency, both the positive and the negative uh, side of it in, uh, in linear scale. Okay. Then what we do is uh, we compute the inverse DFT, so we can plot the inverse EFT of that, so let's plot Y, okay, and this is the blackman harris windowed sinusoid in the time domain, so in which we see it centered around zero, so we see the, the second half of the window uh, in the, at the beginning and the first half at the end. There is no uh, zero phase here, uh, well, there is no um, zero padding, because we actually had the same uh, window size and FFT size, which was uh, 512. Okay, so once we do that, then we undo, we divide by this window and multiply by a triangular window. So we can show the result of that, which is uh, YW. Okay, and this is uh, the signal that we would like to use in the overlap at uh, step. So in which we have divided the black Harris and we have multiplied by a half length uh, triangular window. So it's only if the, the original was 512, now it's 256 samples. So we will be able to overlap by half of that. So we'll be able to overlap by one, 128 samples. Okay, so we have seen the whole synthesis from some frequency values of a given sinusoid. Let's put that together into uh, an, a real analysis synthesis of a fragment of a sound. And this is in test uh, 5. And in here, we are reading uh, a fragment of a noble sound. And we are going to 
do the DFT analysis, then we will detect the peaks, then we will interpolate the peaks to get a more accurate value of the location of the sinusoids, and then we will uh, do the synthesis of that in the frequency domain, and then do the inverse FFT, and undo the window. Here it uh, plots the, the spectrum, resulting spectrum, the magnitude spectrum, and the peaks of that. So let's, uh, let's show that. So let's uh, run this uh, test 5. Okay, and, and this is the magnitude spectrum of the oboe sound, and uh, we have detected some peaks with a given threshold. So let's zoom into that. Okay, and we see the, the crosses which correspond to the interpolated peaks. Here we see the, the effect of the parabolic interpolation is huge because uh, in here we didn't have any zero padding and the uh, FFT was quite a bit small, so the, the effect of the parabolic interpolation is really uh, substantial. Okay, so now from these crosses, we have the magnitude, uh, frequency, and phase of each of these peaks, and we can then compute the inverse of that, and so the, we can plot the Y uh, array in which has the inverse of that. So here we have the zero-centered um, inverse uh, FFT uh, of all these uh, sinusoids of the oboe sound, and if we now center it and uh, undo the Blackman and obtain the and multiply by the triangular, we can uh, plot the uh, YW, which will be this uh, um, windowed by a triangular function uh, signal. And this is the one we will be using in the overlap act of the synthesis, analysis synthesis of the Obosan. Okay. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. Uh, basically, uh, we have uh, looked another component of the sinusoidal model. We have uh, done the, the peak uh, uh, sort of synthesis, and before we talked about how to actually find uh, the peaks. And now what we are missing is the, the putting it all together into a complete analysis uh, synthesis system of time bearing and worrying about the, the continuation of these sinusoids. So this is what we're going to be doing in the, in the next uh, programming lecture. So I hope to uh, see you then. See you. Bye-bye.